Hi, my name is Dr. Gary Bedicher, and welcome to another video for the Graduate Database class. Now in this video we're going to be looking at something called Bernstein's Synthesis. What exactly is Bernstein's Synthesis? Well, Bernstein's Synthesis is a way of taking a relation and a set of functional dependencies and decomposing it to third normal form. If you recall from one of our previous videos, we said that you know, when we do decomposition, nice things happen. So what we're going to do is take an example of a relation, see what normal form it is in, and then show the application of Bernstein's synthesis. So let's take a look at an example right now. Okay. Now on the board behind me, you see an example of a relational schema, R, A, B, C, D, E, so it has five attributes, and we see a set of functional dependencies, A function determines B, A function determines C, D, E function determines C, D, E function determines B, and C function determines D. Now one of the things we want to do is see what normal form it is in. Now we're assuming it's in first normal form. Let's see, you know, if it's in second or third. If it's in third, then we don't need to apply Bernstein synthesis. Now, as you recall, one of the first things we want to do is find out which attributes are prime, which attributes are non-prime. To do that, we need to find the keys in the relation. So we do the left, middle, right table. So on the left, middle, right table, we look at one attribute at a time. A is on the left. B is on the right. C is on the right, C is on the left, so C goes in the middle. D is on the left, D is on the right, so D goes in the middle. And E is on the left only, so it goes on the left. So A and E only occur on the left side of the functional dependencies above. B occurs only on the right side of the functional dependencies above. And C and D occurs on the left and the right of the functional dependencies above. Now the question that comes to mind is, whether or not AE the question is whether or not AE is indeed a key. So we try to figure AE closure. We know it's going to include AE by reflexivity. Now, A function determines B, A function determines C, and C function determines D. So it looks like AE is indeed a key. Now this may not necessarily be the case for the following reason. Because A by itself might determine all the attributes, and E might determine all the attributes. Now as you recall, that can't exist. Why? Because if attributes occur in the left, on the left hand side here, they must be present in every key. So we couldn't have just A as a key or E as a key. So this is our key. <coughs> Now by our definition of second normal form, we violate second normal form if a proper subset of the key functionally determines a non-prime attribute. So with AE, we're going to try A closure and we're going to try E closure. If either of those contain non-prime attributes, then we violate second normal form. But before we do that, just, just as an exercise, we'll identify prime and non-prime attributes, even though you probably know it by now. Our prime attributes are AE, and our non-prime attributes are B, C, D. So let's figure A closure and E closure and see whether e will, either one of those contain B, C, or D. Well, A closure will be A in and of itself. A function determines B. A function determines C. And C function determines D. E closure is just E. So what we observe is a proper subset of the key, in this case A, contains non-prime attributes B, C, and D. It only needs to contain one non-prime attribute, not all of them. So what we can conclude at this point is this relation and the set of functional dependencies violates second normal form. Now, we're going to look at how we would apply Bernstein synthesis to place this into third normal form. To apply Bernstein synthesis, here's what we do. 
We take a relation and a set of functional dependencies. We make sure that the set of functional dependencies is a minimal cover. And then all we do is we take each functional dependency and we make it its own subschema. And once we do that, then we try to combine those subschemas. So there's three aspects of Bernstein synthesis. Make sure your functional dependencies is a minimal cover. Secondly, each functional dependency becomes its own subschema. And third, we try to combine those subschemas. So let's take a look. Here we have the functional dependencies, singleton right hand sides. Oops, I lost the D. Singleton right hand sides. There's no way to reduce the DE here. And we cannot eliminate any of these functional dependencies. So this indeed is a minimal cover. Now the next step is to create, as I said, a relation subschema for each functional dependency. So we create R1 AB, R2 will consist of AC, R3 will be DEC, R4 will be DEB, and R5 will be CD. So, <clears throat> our keys here would be AA, DE, DE, and CD. Okay? So here we've got five subschemas, and each one of those will be in third normal form. Now the third step of the Bernstein synthesis is to combine the left-hand sides, if possible, and also to see whether one relational subschema gets collapsed into another one. So we have, we note that R1 and R2 both have a same left-hand side, so we can combine those. Okay, so we'll call this S, and also we observe R3 and R4 have the same left-hand side, so we can combine those. So that's, <clears throat> that we'll call T, which is DEBC. We also make the following observation. In R5, we've got attributes CD, and we see in subschema T, there's the CD plus a lot of other attributes. So this one actually goes away, and what we end up with is relational subschema S and relational subschema T. And this is from Bernstein's synthesis, a third normal form for each of those subschemas. Now here's a question. Remember before we talked about a decomposition and there's two features that we like. We like it to preserve dependencies and we also like it to be lossless. I rewrote it just to center it on the board here. Now if, as you recall one of the shortcuts that was mentioned in one of the previous videos goes something like this. If the left-hand side and the right-hand side of a functional dependency are present within one of these subschemas, it will be preserved. So the AB occurs here, it's automatically preserved. AC also exists in the functional dependency in the relation subschema, it too is preserved. DEC exists here and is preserved. DEB, all those attributes exist here and it is preserved. And finally, the functional dependency CD those attributes exist there and it's preserved. So, one of the rules with Bernstein's synthesis is the following. When you apply Bernstein's synthesis, you're guaranteed to preserve dependencies in your relation subschema. So the decomposition will always preserve dependencies. Now the question is, is the decomposition lossless when you apply Bernstein's synthesis? Well, let's take a look. 